Let's hope it's okay. Ha! Yes! Okay, is this working, guys? I'm trying something new out. Apparently, I'm really not good with this technology. I don't know. Guys, can you hear me? Just give me something like, yes, I can hear you. Hi, Peggy. Something like that. I also say hi. Oh, yeah. Feedback. Can you hear me? How is the how is how are the acoustics? Diet. Good. Okay. Good. Thanks, David, for the for the feedback. Hello, everybody. Amazing. Okay, we had like the last minute issue again, like always. Okay, I'm I'm gonna come back. I just need to do a little bit of fixing here. I've got some amazing content for you guys. And of course, we're also going to answer some um, live questions from you. Okay, so here we go. Namaste from Ireland. It's so great that you're all here. I'm really, I'm really pleased. Okay, so this, um, what we do, this is the new uh, Gut Healing Sunday. And it's basically something that we're testing. It's a live Q&A. And if, there is, if you like this, and if there's enough resonance from the gut feeder community, we're going to continue doing this weekly on a Sunday, which I'm really doing for you guys. I was, I was like, oh, maybe we can do Thursday. And then everybody like Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So it's going to be Sunday. And the way I've structured this for you is we're going to start off with either an exercise or a little meditation just to connect and tune into our community and for also for you to, to really arrive here and set an intention. And then we go into, um, I'm going to have some, some questions for you, um, no, some answers from you, from questions. Oh, my God. My, my brain is after this, after this technology <laughs> challenge. So I have some um, comments from you that I'm going to answer prepared. So one or two comments, usually it's like a topic. And then we go into your live questions and answer them. Does that sound good, guys? I'm so happy you're here. I'm just checking if I'm if I'm silent and just looking to the side. I'm just looking at the at the chat box, uh, chat box. Okay. So for myself and also for you um, to arrive, I would like to start off with a short meditation, just a few minutes, and then we go into the prepared session that I have. The prepared like the um, the comments that I took out of. The, of the gut feeder community that you've asked before and then we're going to go into the live um, live q a okay so take a moment away from the chat box and just get comfortable wherever you are maybe you're in front of your phone or you're also in front of a computer or your tablet and and just take a moment close your eyes if you like or just lower your gaze away from me and away from the chat box and take a deep breath in and out and in again and out and I would like to welcome you here in the as part of the gut feeder community and see if you can also like welcome yourself maybe you want to give yourself even like a physical self hug I sometimes do that when I feel nervous or when I feel uh, excited or just to reconnect with myself. Just taking a moment to appreciate yourself that you take the time to be here with us and to, to work on your gut feelings, to work on improving your health, finding out more about your body. And just a moment of acknowledging what you're doing for yourself, like a moment of self-appreciation. And then also, if you like, you can imagine how we are all connected through the World Wide Web and just all over the globe, knowing that there are people who are right now with you or if you watch this as, um, 
as a repetition, as a replay, still there will be still people in the field who are tuning into just right now with you. See if you can feel that, that connection, that community. Those are all people who want to know more about themselves, who want to thrive, want to follow their gut feelings, want to feel better, even better physically. Just see if you can if you, if you can connect and tap into that field. And then before we end this meditation or this tuning in, I'd like you to ask yourself the question, why are you here? What makes you Come here on a Sunday, take the time off out of your beautiful weekend or whenever you watch this and tune into this live Q&A on gut feelings. What do you want to get out of this? Why are you here? And bring that intention throughout the throughout our time together. Bring that intention with you when you're coming back now by taking a deep breath in and a long breath out and opening your eyes when you're ready. Fully engage here and be alive. And then, guys, if you like, I would be interested. Just give me one word or one sentence. What's your intention for sharing this time with, with us here with the Gut Feeler community on this Sunday or whenever you watch that, let me know in the chat box or if it's a replay in the comments below. Okay, I'm just looking at the chat box. <laughs> okay, good guys. Now let's dive into, well, again, if you're just coming in, welcome. This is Gut Healing Sunday, the new format of the live Q&A. If that works, I'm happy to continue that on a weekly basis. Let me know if the resonance is there and if you like these, these Q&As. So we had a short meditation, we tuned into the field and also setting an intention, feeling into what do you want to get out of this, why are you here? And now we're going to dive into answering a few questions from your comments um, that I had from the gut feeler community and then we go into some live questions. Okay guys, good. So the topic that I took out and that a lot of you asked had to do with uh, SIBO, Candida and IBS and grains. So comments I got from you guys, uh, just naming a few here. We have Gypsy Queen 65 it says, I miss eating porridge. What about buckwheat? Uh, Vicky, hi Peggy, are grains healthy or can they cause health issues? Bob Schmob, do you eat or recommend people healing, healing to avoid all grains, including quinoa, rice, and buckwheat? And then we have Night King who asks, what about oatmeal with blueberries and almond milk? And he asked that on a, I think a SIBO or Candida video. So the question I'd love to go into now before we go to your live questions is, can I eat oats, grains, oatmeals when you have Candida, SIBO or IBS? Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into why gluten is um, toxic for your body and why it feeds pathogens in the body. I, I think uh, if, you, if you're new to this channel and you think like, oh really? Um, I'm gonna link uh, a video down below which uh, says something like uh, why dairy, gluten and eggs um, make your health worse or something like that. I'm gonna link that in the, in the description below if you haven't watched that. But for everybody who's already on the same page that gluten is not uh, healing for your body and you want to eat a gluten-free diet, but still grains, um, there, are a few things to, uh, there are a few things to consider to this. Um, so first of all, um, 
If you want to hear from Zebo and Candida and constipation, even IBS, and you want to do that the fast way, um, and that might not work for you, but in general, if you would just want to have a yes or a no to grains, gluten-free grains, I would rather go for no, um, just because, and that doesn't mean that it needs to be your case, uh, just because um, oats and other gluten-free um, um, grains, they do not feed pathogens in, the body, in your body. They're not like wheat or rye, anything like that. But sometimes if you have a low stomach acid, if you have um, an offset microbiome, they can actually start fermenting in your gut, especially if you combine them with fruits or with honey, anything that is very fastly, usually very fast absorbed. Um, they can start like fermenting in the gut and you have more symptoms. You have bloating, you have gas, you have ab abdominal pain or gut pain. Um, the other thing to know about gluten and uh, about grains in general is that they are acidifying for your body, for, for your body, for your body. Um, acidifying means that they cre create more acidity in your body, not in your stomach, but in your overall body. And acidity is really like a, a thriving ground for pathogens. So we already eat through all those processed foods and through animal foods and through grains, they are all acidifying. Um, alkalizing foods are vegetables and fruits. And I have also a video about both of those, like the best alkaline foods and the worst uh, acidic foods to avoid. If you want to look more into that, just in general, know that grains are acidifying. Um, so let's see. Two more video recommendations in the comments, uh, in, the, in the description below is about, uh, I had, one that I took in Tenerife, like what are the best carbs? Um, I went for a supermarket in Tenerife on the Canary Islands, good, bad, and worst carbohydrates to buy in a supermarket. And the other one is about cravings for bread. So if you're somebody who, um, you know, got those, got those cravings, oh, I want some, you know, I want the carbs, I want the bread. Um, I talk about why do we uh, crave unhealthy carbs? So if you haven't watched those videos, LinkedIn below. In general, if you want to make, grains, gluten-free grains, if you want to try and work it out, and you have SIBO, candida, leaky gut, IBS, constipation, digestive upset, the best thing to do is to make them easier to absorb when you still want to eat them, is so soak them, soak them in water first before you eat them, and if you want to take it one step further, uh, sprout them. That will make them easier to, to be digested, and it would also increase their nutrient content. Also, if you eat them raw, it nourishes the microbiome. One of the best easy ways to uh, sprout grains, like the type of grain is like buckwheat, I found for myself, uh, that you can eat raw. You can sprout all grains, but like for eating grains raw, I have a good, uh, had good experiences with buckwheat. It's also pretty easy. Okay, guys, um, just looking in the chat box if you're still with me. How's the acoustic? Is there still buffering? I think I heard from somebody that there is buffering. Just let me know. This hair is really red, isn't it? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. I get an it's okay. Yeah. I'm in Panama. <laughs> no buffering. Yeah, no buffering. Okay. Good, guys. So this was, uh, this was the thing about um, gluten-free gluten-free grains in general, um, summarizing, if you want to heal as fast as possible from digestive upset, I would try to eat as less as possible or, or leave them out. Or if you think like, oh, I'm actually doing okay, try to soak them first and then sprout them. And even if you cook, even if you cook them after you sprout them, they will still be easier to be digested than if you just, if you just cook them like that. Yeah. Especially things like quinoa, um, I had good experience with quinoa as well if it's soaked and sprouted. Okay, now I have one more thing that I hope is going. I hope you're going to like this. I have a little bit of a um, preparation going on here, and that is about plant-based milk. Nothing to do with SIBO now, but I often I often have the question, especially I mean myself here in Panama. You know, this is very U.S. influenced, so all the plant milks that we get, um, they come with like a ton of like additives and all of that. So I had a few questions about like, what is my favorite plant-based milk or a good alternative for dairy milk that's also like creamy and stuff if you put it in a tea 
or if you're really naughty and put in the coffee. Um, so first of all, what I would love to say is like, when we talk about plant-based milks, what I wouldn't uh, use is soy milk. Soy milk, not store-bought and also not, um, not uh, DIY made, just because 99% of the soy is GMO contaminated. Even if it's organic, you cannot be sure anymore that it's not uh, contaminated because they, you know, they, they just cross over. It's very hard to not get um, GMO foods, which just creates so much inflammation in the body. And also soy is a little bit a tricky one. Now, some people say, it's, oh my God, it's really amazing for the, for the healthy plant-based protein. But from my practice, from my experience myself and also with my clients, I actually am not really pro-soy. Pro I would, I'm not completely against it, but I'm, I would rather um, you to, uh, to, to use another alternative because there are plenty alternatives. Now, um, first of all, like store-bought, store-bought plant-based milks, Unless you're in Europe, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. Like one of the nasty in toxic ingredients that I found here on the plant-based milks, something like carrageen, um, all kinds of xanthan gums, so thickeners. Um, yeah, anything that makes it anything that makes it like um, stable to be, you know, like to preserve preservatives, synthesized uh, vitamins and minerals really bad. Your body doesn't know what to do with them. They are not connected to uh, phytonutrients. Forget about them. They're just good for marketing, but they're not good for your body. Um, yeah, just it's just loaded with stuff, artificial sweeteners, um, sugar, uh, high fructose corn syrup, you know, all, all kinds of stuff in there. So my best tip, and also the cheapest one actually, is to do them yourself. Do your plant-based milks yourself. It's so quick. Don't worry if you don't have much time. I, I um, I don't have so much time either, but I've actually done it myself. So my favorite one is almond milk. And here's what I do. I thought I'm just going to demonstrate that to you um, because some people like demonstrations. So all you need is almonds. You see those guys? Almonds here, nice plastic bag, I know. And organic is best if you can get organic almonds. And then what you do is you soak them for four hours or overnight. You soak them here, look at those. And then they get like, they get more voluminous. You can see that here. Then you discharge the water. You put new water in, and then those guys go into a blender. Huh? It's just a blender I, I borrowed from my neighbor here to demonstrate that, nice and dirty. They'll go, they'll, they go in the, into a blender, I put like this much of water and then the almonds, you know, rinse that water off and put new water on it. And then you blend this all up and all you have to do then, is like super simple, you put it through a nut milk bag, something like this. See? You can also use a cheesecloth. I put uh, in the description below, I put one uh, from Organic Cotton that I like uh, from Amazon. If you want to if you wanna have a look at that one, if you don't have a cheesecloth or a nut milk bag yet, they're really cheap and they last forever. So put strain that through here and then you get the white milk. You can still use the, uh, the almonds, um, which is the, you know, everything that was not in the... Um, in the milk, you can still use it like for a smoothie or later on, just separate it. And then it's in, I have it usually in a glass like this and I put it in the fridge. And now guys, so if you wanna, and then you, it, it holds like one or two days. What I noticed more like by accident um, is that you can actually make your own like almond sour milk. By the way, the good thing about almonds is that they are alkalizing for your body. It's one of the uh, one of the few nuts that are alkalizing for your body. They're high fat and they're high protein foods. Yes, but they're still, you know, they give you substance and they're alkalizing. So that's really good for um, for your gut health. Now I'm going to leave you for a second, go to my fridge and I'm show you my, my new secret, something that I discovered. And I think you might like as well for improving your microbiome. Okay, there she is again. <laughs> okay, so guys, 
What you can do is um, if you if you're more experimental, you did your almond milk and now you can do like a sour almond milk or like a probiotic drink. And all I do is I have this almond milk. This is like the sour product already. And then I put in a little bit of raw organic honey, which I don't have here right now. I have it over there. Raw organic honey, like one um, teaspoon for this whole glass. And then I put in those probiotic capsules. So you open them up and then you just put in the powder and a little bit of lemon juice. Just squeeze it in. Then I mix that and I just leave it on the counter top for like one day, two days, depending on where you live. In the tropics, it was like one day. And then you smell, it starts smelling a little bit sour and then I put it in the fridge. And this is like what it basically creates is it helps the probiotics that are in here through the honey. Don't use sugar or what else could you not use? <laughs> sugar alcohols, anything like that. I usually use honey because it's a, um, it's a natural product and it's actually good for your gut health and for your nervous system. And those guys get fed, um, the probiotics get fed by the honey and then this is creating basically like more prob probiotics. Now, you know me, like the best probiotics come from sprouts and from anything alive. There are elevated biotics around it but sometimes like a probiotic drink like that can be nice and right now i enjoy it i'm just gonna drink one for you so you can watch me enjoy it <laughs> yeah it's like a little bit acid a little bit sour and also still a little bit sweet from the honey really nice drink in between okay guys so that was the <laughs> that was the plant milk sharing just going through my notes if i forgot anything i wanted to share with you No. Okay. Now, I wanted to take some time to have uh, to answer your life questions because that's why you're here, right? So nice to connect with you. Um, before we do that, I want to mention like two support options that you can use. And those support options are either Super Chat or a button on my website. And what I will do, um, so basically this is all for free. You know, I'm happy you are here. I'm doing this because I love it. I love to support you and I'm like grateful to being received um, a lot. And sometimes I had people reaching out and saying, hey, I want to thank you. You know, I want to say thank you. And can I donate something? And I was like, oh, yes, sure you can donate something. So I've created um, a donation button on my website. I'm going to link that down below. Basically for you, if you want to say thank you, if you want to support the channel, if you feel like you get value out of the channel, out of doing this here on Sunday on the live, um, live Q&As, then it's an opportunity to, to give back. I, I warmly receive that, of course. And so that's one option to, to use that uh, donation button. I link that in the description below. It's on peggyschirmer.com slash feedback slash thank you. And then the other option, which might be interesting for you if you have a question in a live Q&A, is called Super Chat. That's, a, that's an option from YouTube that YouTube provides for content creators and for the community to engage. And if you, so basically you donate something, whatever amount you want, and then your question gets highlighted in the box. So I can, you basically pop out for me so I can see you more easily. And that's, these are the, the options that you have. Of course, you can just watch it if you don't want to do this. I like you anyway, but that, I wanted to offer that if you got value out of that and if you want to support the channel. Okay, so let's dive into your questions. So hit me with your questions. I'm ready. Okay. Okay, that's a good one here from Keith. I mean, you're no limits on the question they're all good um keith travick asks how do you know when SIBO is under control well i tell you how not to know don't do the SIBO test <laughs> i have a video on where i explain why the SIBO test basically is um i have not to say a lot to say that but um you know all those tests it's like the basic message on this channel is to understand that Tests cannot, cannot do the same for you as when you start understanding your body and when you create like an, an, an inner connection to your body. You know, so and of course, you know, you kind of you got that diagnosis and you think like, oh my God, I want to get that under control. I understand. So my question and my answer to that question would be the easiest way to see if SIBO is under control is your symptoms. Are your symptoms? 
Are you able to eat uh, fruits and vegetables and carbohydrates and all of those low footmap diet foods, which I do not recommend the low footmap diet at all. I recommend fruits. I recommend um, vegetables. I recommend healthy grains sometimes if they're sprouted. Um, I don't recommend eggs at all because they feed pathogens like um, resistant strain of streptococcus, which is the cause of SIBO and your small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, just in case anybody you don't know what SIBO is. So my, uh, my, my answer would be um, your symptoms. And then what you need to understand is often, I often hear, or often people do that, make that mistakes. Also with my clients still, although I'm keep, pre I'm keep repeating that, is once your symptoms are under control or you feel like you, you don't have any, any symptoms anymore, your body needs up to one month, one month longer to heal. Because I got to understand that your symptoms are really just like the tip of the iceberg. And that's like not just for SIBO, that's for all, all symptoms, no matter what you have. It's like the tip of the iceberg. So the body starts to produce symptoms when it, has, when it is on an edge, when it can't, when it, you know, it can't cope anymore. The body copes like 24-7 with bacteria, with viruses, with he toxic heavy metals, with natural detox products that we have in our body just from our metabolism. So the body is 24-7 active. And so, so once your symptoms are gone, you need to have like one month where you still keep doing the good stuff. So if you then, you know, symptoms are gone. Oh my God, nice burger, you know, back to the eggs, back to lots of chicken with antibiotics or whatever. So really um, understand that first of all, it needs to be a lifestyle. And second, don't just jump. Okay, symptoms gone. And now I'm jumping back into... Um, Naughty, naughty diet. Okay, I hope this helps. <laughs> okay. David, I like your question. Uh, David A, any advice on belching and bloating? Yes, I've got a ton of advice uh, for belching and bloating. Uh, has a lot to do with your microbiome with low stomach acid, which um, low stomach acid, often people, they have a lot of acidity in their body, especially in their stomach, but it's not the good stomach acid. So when, when you do not have enough good stomach acid, guys, this is for everybody. Most of us don't have low stomach acid, even if that wasn't your question. If you don't have enough good stomach acid, the purpose of this stomach acid is when you eat anything and there are pathogens, we all, all, everything's full of bacteria and also pathogens like pathogenic bacteria. It is to kill off this pathogenic bacteria. But if your stomach acid is not strong enough, bacteria will, pathogenic bacteria will start to overgrow in your stomach. And also you will not be able to break down proteins, um, Yes, that's what the that what the stomach acid does. It's the first stage to breaking down proteins and other nutrients. You know, absorbing uh, vitamin B12 because the intrinsic factor, which is important for vitamin B12 absorption, is not there. So it's like a it's like a cascade. You know, so stomach acid is after your mouth. You know, after the saliva in your mouth, which start that starts digesting food. That's the first most important um, gateway for your digestion. So looking into improving that is a big one. And I've got a ton of videos. I think I've got a whole playlist about stomach acid. So David, A, focus on, focus on your stomach acid. Focus on not feeding pathogenic bacteria and supporting um, the body through diet, through easy, easy absorbable foods, you know, not high fat, not high protein, but lots of vegetables, lots of chewing, yeah, smoothie, um, fruits, foods that are easy to be digested and actually contain a live enzyme. So a live enzymes, everything that is raw, we're not talking about raw carnivore diet, guys, but raw fruits, vegetables that contain active enzymes. So they help already breaking themselves down. Now, one, one lovely image I have is like, a, when I describe that to clients, it's like, imagine like a banana and they have like their own backpack. You know, they have like their digestive enzymes and they're basically everything they do, um, they digest themselves. So they don't have any, there's no digestive effort if you eat a ripe banana, not green, not like kind of banana, but really ripe and brown spots. Yeah. Okay. Hope that answered your question, David. Let me know. Okay. 
I'm screaming through the uh, through the chat box. Oh, nice. Thomas makes already almond milk. Yes, it's important to throw away the water after you soak them. There we go. This water goes away. Is oil of oil healthy? Oh, I like that question. Um, is oil of oil healthy? So, hmm, question for who? You know, <laughs> question for who? And you gotta understand that in general, the best foods are foods that are whole foods. Oil of oil is not a whole food. Coconut oil is not a whole food. Butter is not a whole food. There's nothing. Oil is a whole food. An olive is a whole food, and a coconut is a whole food. You know, this is kind of. Um, Oil is 100% fat. It doesn't exist like that in nature. So if you if you want to, my like hardcore opinion, I'm not you know I don't I don't say don't eat any oil, but hardcore opinion would be leave it. You know, so olive oil is not healthy. An olive is is high in fat. That might be good. You know, it's, it's still high fat food. A little bit liver stimulating through the um, through the bitterness. The liver likes bitter, by the way, um, and it's nice in salad and stuff and it's filling. So I'd rather would have you uh, using olives. And the, the problem with olive oil is also that it's not heat stable. So if you, if you use that for frying or anything like that, you actually create um, toxicity. You create, um, you create a certain type of um, chemical that can be cancerous, that puts more stress on your liver, on your digestive system, because it's aggressive, you know, inflammation. So I'd rather, um, I mean, over a salad, you know, if you really need to, I'd rather have you use avocado. You know, if you want something fatty, avocado and um, lemon juice and a little bit of Himalaya salt or celery juice makes a nice dressing, um, but not the oil of oil. It's not super naughty, but I'd rather, if you eat it, eat it cold. My cold. Um, my favorite one is coconut oil. It's heat stable, smells good. It's multi-purpose, you know, after a sunburn, after you cut yourself. Um, you can use it for anything, <laughs> for your hair, you know, if you colored your hair and then they are kind of all over the place, you can put them back in shape. So rather coconut oil. Okay, let's see. Hope that answered your question. Thank you, Sarah, for loving me. <laughs> okay. How long after eating should we wait till drinking water? Asks Sean. 30 minutes minimum, depending on what you've, what you've ate. Already a good question because most people, they do like they eat. I don't have anything here. I'm not, yeah. Ginger. They eat and they drink, you know, all together. And that lowers down your digestive enzymes. It uh, waters down your stomach acid. There's more putrefying uh, food in the gut. So that's, really, that's a disaster, not only for people who have gut issues, but just in general. Because enzymes, guys, they are so precious and they take so much effort to to be synthesized by your liver and by for your um, for your digestion so really it's a big effort so you want to they are kind of they are the gold nuggets you don't want to um, waste them so 30 minutes minimum and also 30 minutes before before having uh, a meal i have uh, hoo hoo me hi hoo says i have histamine intolerance so i cannot eat fermented foods um, yeah, you don't have to eat fermented foods to um, repair your gut. I've got actually a video just about histamine intolerance. If you Google that, just histamine intolerance, gut feelings, or histamine intolerance, Peggy, I think that show, um, should show up. People really engaged also under the video. Make sure you read the comments. Um, so you see there's some confirmation happening there where I give you exactly um, tips on how to overcome histamine intolerance, what it has to do with your liver, and that you can get out of this and you don't have to avoid histamine foods all your life. I think that will help you. And if you want to improve your gut health more, look into, I have a playlist about the microbiome, how to Im improve your microbiome. And also one of the last Q and A's was just about the microbiome. I think that will help. Hi, who? <laughs> okay. So any more questions? Let me see. What about avocado oil? Ha, huh. yeah, avocado oil. Uh, Eat avocados, perfect. The same with, um, it's still not a whole food avocado oil. Also, avocado oil is not really stable. So it's just a little bit the same like um, linseed oil. I do not recommend unless you do your, make your own avocado oil or you just 
you just have like a little bottle. It often is not stable and then it becomes rancid and then it's really, really toxic for your, for your liver. Okay. Yeah, I don't really like the autoimmune protocol diet because already there's already the fault. I'm just going, just answering here this to, sorry, who was it? Oh, you're gone. Oh my God, this chat box. Um, Fred, Fred is your name? Yeah, Fred. Hi, Fred. Um, so autoimmune uh, protocol diet uh, has already a faulty in the name because autoimmune, <laughs> Autoimmune basically means your body is attacking itself. That's the main message that you get with that sticker. And that's just not true. Your body is never attacking itself. I studied medicine when medical, um, when medical professionals and when, um, when science gives, you, gives out this autoimmune label, what they're basically saying is the same with the genes. It's your genes, it's your DNA, uh, it's autoimmune. What they're saying is we don't really know we we, we want to we need to know because we are the experts, but we do not know that we found an antibody there. But it is does says nothing. The body the body guys is never attacking itself. Where do you see that in nature that the body is attacking itself or in animals or anywhere? We don't. The body is not attacking itself, guys. The, your body is always working for you. And I know that's like that's like a slap in the face if you just got that autoimmune label. You know, it's like oh, I have something to hold on to. But in the long run, in the long run, um, Fred, for you, it's a blessing because you know that um, you don't have to, you know, your body and you, it's not like two, you know, like you don't have to fight against anything. You know, your body is working for you. And if you just tune in and you meditate on that and you just feel into how that feels if you, if you tell your body, you know, it, like you are doing your best, or if you're feeling to, oh, I have an autoimmune disease and my body's attacking itself. You just feel the truth. It's literally. And there is no medical evidence, never, ever, anywhere that there is an autoimmune disease. That's a label. That's a sticker because medicine doesn't know. We still don't know. But we will find out that it's viral or that it's um, bacterial, pathogenic, toxic heavy metals. Those are the guys that are culprit for your um, for your autoimmune disease so no autoimmune protocol diet because it's already faulty in the first place okay uh, Eileen just seeing your question here Eileen MC11 um, what about endometriosis I've got a video on endometriosis got you will love that video there is like a, a bunch of comments down below that people got better with uh, their endometriosis and I tell you all about this what that really is about it has a lot to do with toxic heavy metals and that the body um, basically, like for a female, for a female body, the most important part first is the heart, the first most important organ, and the second one is your uterus, because that's creating life. That needs to be clean, fresh of toxic heavy metals. That's why we have the period as women, and eighty percent of your immune system during your period is busy with keeping that area clean. If you have a lot of toxicity in the body and a certain type of viruses, you got this label of endometriosis, this is what's happening. And if you want to know more about that, I don't want to just go into that too much here, but I've got a whole video just about that. Okay, I hope that helps. Tel Aviv, hello, it's great. People from Tel Aviv, professional chef. Just going through your questions. Yeah, Frank, uh, Busby, Quinoa, and Millet, any thoughts? Yeah, amazing. Both great. I actually, just this morning, I had a, a Quinoa and Millet together, like a, like a porridge type of thing. Again, if you have SIBO, Candida, IBS, leaky gut, and you might want to try out if you want to boost your, your healing, um, want to make that faster, and if you're already eating pretty clean, you know, not if you're, if you're still on eggs and and uh, any more products and stuff, then this is the much better option. But if you're already eating clean and you want to speed up, I recommend to lower the grains or leave them out uh, for now. If you feel you don't have any symptoms, sprout them, soak them first, and then cook them, and they're amazing. Their quinoa um, has a lot of healthy protein. It's a complete protein source, one of my favorite proteins, apart from spirulina and hemp seeds. 
Um, and millet is great too. It's also easy, uh, easy absorbable for a grain. Okay, let's do like two more questions and then we're gonna see each other next Sunday maybe. <laughs> Oh yeah, can you give me your op opinion on water fast? Oh, one of my favorite subjects, fasting. That's a big one. Um, mocha, tea mocha, thank you for that question. Um, fasting, really, you only want to do water fast if you have a really healthy body. I do not recommend any chronic ill um, clients to do water fasting, especially not if you struggle with your liver, with chronic fatigue, your adrenals. Um, any kinds of brain fog symptoms, neurological symptoms, because that would just uh, aggravate your system and your body needs nutrients in order to fight pathogens, in order to let go of toxic heavy metals. There is a lot of chemistry going on in your body and water fasting will just overload your system. I have a video, it's called, if you just put in, <laughs> sorry about all those video things, but <laughs> I think that's the easiest, so I can answer more questions um, about uh, just fasting and gut feelings in the in the tab in YouTube, and you will find that video where I talk about dry fasting, juice fasting, water fasting, and what you need to be aware of, and if that's really a good thing for you to do. Can be amazing. Can be amazing fasting or one meal per day, things like that. But for some people, it's also not. Okay, last but not least, let's have one more question. Okay, great one. Uh, Angela Garcia sounds kind of Argentina, from Argentina. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Um, so you, uh, you said, I sometimes don't handle fried foods. Yes, yeah, you don't want to eat fried foods, Angela. Fried foods are like a slap in the face of your liver. Yeah, it's directly after uh, alcohol, processed foods, uh, fried foods, um, really, really toxic for your liver, very hard to... Um, to break down fried foods not good thing no french fries guys better bake them you know if you want to do for example baked sweet potatoes give you the same give you uh, give you the same um, kick you can put afterwards you can put some avocado on top or some himalaya sea salt some lemon juice um, maybe a drop or two of coconut oil if you really want it greasy but do not uh, really heat up fat in such a high um, on such high temperatures so no, weather, no worries that you feel bad if you feel bad when you eat fried foods. That means that your liver is on an absolute maximum and can't handle that. Or has to do with your, um, with your enzymes and your, your, um, your gut lining that is very inflamed and you do not have enough. Um, if, you, if you can't handle fats in general, you can't really break them down. So then you get also symptoms. But usually it's the liver when you have fried food issues. Okay, guys, I think I could continue with this forever, um, but I wanted to keep it like 45 minutes for the live Q&As. What I would love to ask you now, um, first of all, thanks so much for, for, for joining in. I know I can't answer any every question, but I hope uh, it helped out a little bit. Uh, I've got an interview next week with a mushroom expert. His name is Adam, and he's a very, very interesting guy. He is like just doing... Um, edible mushrooms he goes out there his um, his brand is called learn your land he goes out there and uh, collects edible mushrooms and also medicinal mushrooms and he just does this for years he's a, an expert on mushrooms and i would love to know from you what are your questions around mushrooms do you have any questions about edible mushrooms medicinal um, mushrooms don't put them in a the chat box please put them in the comments down below under the video um, so I have them for um, checking in. I can ask uh, Adam those questions. Okay, guys, uh, I hope, let me know, please, uh, if this was valuable for you. I'd love to, um, I'd love to know if, you know, if it makes sense for me, take the time out on my Sunday <laughs> to answer those questions for you. I really like doing it. Um, if the resonance is good, thumbs up me, please. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, um, make sure you do. And also hit 
the notification bell. I know I always need to say that. You hear that every YouTuber says the notification bell just because it's important for you. Then you get notified um, if a new live stream comes up or a new video. That would be awesome. Okay. Hit the thumbs up before you leave. I wish you a beautiful Sunday or a beautiful day or night whenever you're watching this. Thank you so much. And um, I see you soon. Bye, guys. Thanks.